Um, so, so today I'm, I'm going to talk about Frameless. It's a uh, type level library as of actually officially moved from incubator status to uh, full project to this morning. Um, so that's, yeah. And please clap for the maintainers. That's not one of me. So, uh, so um, a little bit about myself. I'm a software engineer at, on the data science and um, quant team at. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm on a data science and quant team at uh, Co2 Management. Um, I've been doing Scala for the last five years, data engineering for the last uh, year and a half, and I live in Brooklyn, so. It's nice to have uh, any Scala and Type Level Summit in, uh, in my home turf. So, uh, first of all, like, l let's, let's um, answer the question, what is Frameless? Uh, it's a, um, a project that's, that's aiming to add a more well-typed veneer on, on Apache Spark. I'm sure most of you have heard by now what Apache Spark is. Um, in my opinion, it's like the killer app for, for Scala. A lot of people use it for you know, data processing, streaming of all sorts. But, um, you know, if you've ever had any sort of interaction with Spark, you would know that it's not always the most idiomatic Scala that you'll see. Um, and so, you know, Frameless came about to try and solve some of those problems and make it a bit more idiomatic and a bit more or, um, typeful. So it's powered by Shapeless and Cats under the hood. Um, see the animations but so let's let's start off with the uh, with an example um, you know in in spark the original uh, API was RDDs resilient um, um, distributed data sets um, uh, you, you'd be able to use things like uh, FP combinators like map um, filter um, and and all those familiar um, combinators from the uh, Scala collections library um, RDDs are fault 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 tolerant in parallel, um, but you know, as, as, you, as you actually use RDDs, you may notice that it's not actually super well optimized under the hood. Um, so just looking at an example real quick, um, we'll just define some uh, musical artists, throw that in, a, in an RDD, and you know, let's, let's just take an example of commutation. I just wanted to know the average age of all these musical artists. And so you know, using uh, combinators like map and reduce, um, I'm able to figure that out. So in um, later versions of Spark, I think this is maybe Spark 1.3 or 1.5, um, they introduced what's called a data frame. Um, if you've ever used anything like pandas in, in Python, you know that data frames is, is kind of an encode representation of a table. Um, this had a really nice um, benefit of you know, being able to be optimized, um, kind of like SQL, you know, like you, you have like query plans, um, logical uh, and, and physical plans that can get optimized. So, so when, you're, when you're doing operations um, under the hood, Spark with its Catalyst engine can optimize what you're doing um, and make things faster. So let's say if you were doing an operation on, uh, um, and I'll actually show an example, but if you do an operation on just a subset of columns, it will only do it on, and it will only um, serialize that part of the uh, data frame. Fortunately, you know, this was kind of a step back in terms of an API. Um, if, if anyone's ever worked with data frames, you'll see that it's uh, even worse in terms of the typing um, uh, discipline. So looking at this, uh, um, the same example, we're just going to create a data frame from it. Um, we can pass in, you know, aggregate functions, select functions that use stringly typed columns in order to do its business. So you, you can see it in the second example where I tr try to select a non-existent genre column. Um, what I get is a runtime exception, and you know this isn't this isn't the nicest thing to do, right? If as we as Scala developers, we don't really like to know um, we really like to know what can go wrong up front at compile time. Um, and then in Spark 1.6 and, and Spark 2.0, um, data frames kind of became what's called a data set. Um, you know, think of these as a combination of both RDDs and data frames. You get the, some, uh, quite a bit of the compile time safety of RDDs with the uh, catalyst optimi optimizations under the hood. And in fact, data frames are now type alias as data sets of you know, these untyped rows. Um, what, so that comes with these things called encoders, and that, that, this is like a, a reflection-based approach to taking your Scala types and encoding into a memory-efficient um, representation. So typical types that are, you know, are supported, like the core in string long, case classes, any of those product types. 
So if we can see the same example, we'll create a data set instead. Um, and I, in my first example, you can see that you know, I'm, I'm combining both a typed and untyped API, filtering on age, averaging those ages. Um, um, and then you can see that you know, with data sets, it still kind of suffers the same problem, right? Stringly typed columns. So you, you, you're trying to select a genre, and it doesn't exist, and you still find out at, at runtime. Um, and so, you, you know, this is, I, I make a big deal about this because I've actually suffered from this before in production, you know, like, who wants to find out in the middle of your night, in the middle of the night that your 12-hour job failed because you made a typo in a column? Like, you're gonna feel really bad, uh, you're gonna waste a lot of time and waste a lot of money. So, so what Frameless introduces is a, um, a veneer over data set. It's called a type data set. Um, you know, one of the advantages of this, and pro in my opinion, the, the biggest advantage is type safe columns. You know, these, it works through um, the power of shapeless, and I am not gonna pretend to know, or, or to, to say that I know shapeless, but uh, it uses some of the machinery under the hood, like witnesses, selectors, record types, to, to provide compile time evidence that the field that you're referring to is actually something that exists on the case class of, you know, the, the data set that, you're, that you have. Um, and it, it adds some other nice little features, like if you've ever worked with, um, you know, any of the side affecting methods on, on data frames or data sets, you know that when you write something like data set dot show, it's a, it's a side affecting um, a method. So instead what type data set does is returns a job that you explicitly have to run, kind of like, um, you know, Scala Z task or, um, or any of the, you know, um, monadic, uh, container or uh, monadic types that need to be run. Um, and then, you know, another nice thing that it adds is a typed encoder um, concept. And then this is, you know, compile time evidence that you can serialize a type to um, something that Spark can understand. Unfortunately, you know, this is still kind of a young project and we don't have enough, like, contributors or users. So we don't have, you know, 100% API coverage yet. So here's that same example, except we're just gonna take um, you know, the, the artist and create a type data set out of it. And there's, there's you know, factory methods for creating this out of a sequence, out of a data set, whatnot. So um, this is mostly like the same example as a, as a data set, right? But the, the big difference here is like I'm selecting using a symbol. Like the, if, this is a not super often used feature of Scala, but you know, single, uh, single quote, and then the name of the field, um, that is a symbol, and then that is proven at compile time with shapeless and, and, and frameless to say, is this a field? Um, and so it's a type check column name, and then I use an explicit run. I'm able to get the same information, except it's proven at compile time. And then um, um, at the very end, this example of, you know, if I try to select a column that doesn't exist on, on artist, like, uh, column blah, this actually doesn't compile. It's not a runtime error. Another example, not just selects and filters, but you know, we can do um, safer group buys, safer.as, if you've used dataset.as, um, you know, it, it kind of feels like a cast at times, and, and that's something that you only find out at runtime if that fails, except, you know, this is also compile time. So I mentioned before, there's a concept of typed encoders. Um, these are static compile time encoders. They're recursively resolved. Um, you know, if you've used Circe, that's uh, a very similar um, construct here. It's, it's something that, you know, that is contrasted with Spark encoders, like something that um, instead of being runtime, it, it, still, um, it still uses it uh, in some parts under the hood, but um, it's a little bit safer in terms of um, guarantees with a compiler. Um, and, and one big thing about Spark is, you know, the encoder API is not something that we can easily extend at the moment. So if you, if, if you dig in the Spark source, you can see this, this little snippet here that, you know, you can't actually define encoders for your custom types. I, I think maybe you can use Cryo to do that, but, um, but it's, it's kind of an area that, you know, that's, it's a bit thorny and, um, you don't get, obviously, the compile time guarantees. I keep, I keep harping about that, but that's really why I like this project. Um, so the, the mechanism by which you know, a, a, an application developer or a data engineer like me would um, roll our own custom encodings is by using frameless injection. So this is 
you know, sometimes people call this a bijection or a one-to-one -one correspondence between two types. So you define a function from A to B or B to A. And Frameless knows how to take that under the hood and create a typed encoder out of it. So looking at this example, let's say that I wanted to define a sealed hierarchy of um, genres. And I want to splice that in with my um, previously defined artists. Um, if I were to try to do this without defining uh, a custom in injection, this will give you a compile time error, or uh, um, it, it can't find the implicit value for, for this encoder. So, you know, I go through the m machinery of defining this injection, so I take a genre and I convert it to an int. Um, you know, some, some people like to think of uh, these kind of sealed, sealed hierarchies as, as enumerations. This kind of effectively is what I'm doing here. Um, so, now that I have the implicit uh, evidence here, um, you know, I can create this type data set. And you can see that when, now, this is where it gets a little bit um, sticky at times, is when I actually show the data, it's actually encoded as an int. So, it's, it's not as nice to, to see that, you know, oh, what is genre one? Now I gotta go look it up. This is an area of possible improvement, um, so stay tuned. And so, as, uh, as Mark has mentioned earlier, uh, Cats and Spark has a, uh, I guess, a th uh, sticky relationship of sorts. It's, it's really hard to define instances for data sets. Um, you know, I mentioned that uh, Cats is also used in Frameless. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of difficult to, to, to have the whole spectrum of, of instances that we'd like. Um, and that's particularly because of, you know, um, data sets needing encoders, and those encoders are type parameterized. We can get away with this for functors of futures because um, uh, execution context doesn't take one. So in the implicit def for actually defining a, um, uh, instances for, for futures, it doesn't need a, another type parameter. Same thing for monad. Um, you, you know, if you think about what a monad would be like for data sets, you know, it's a nested data set of data set. And this effectively if you, uh, would be a, a Car Cartesian join. And if you know about Cartesian joins in, in any sort of normal database or, or Spark, if you're not careful, you'll blow everything up. So in closing, I mean, this is a really a beginner level talk. I just wanted to um, drum up interest because I've had you know, several conversations with people who are trying Spark. They're experienced scholarly developers. You know, they look at this, this API and they wonder why is this so uh, unprincipled, um, and then, and then I, you know, I point them to this way, and I'm like, hey, have you tried Frameless? And, and I get like reactions of like, oh, this is awesome. Like, I wish this was, you know, more fleshed out. And so, um, you know, type safe columns. I, it's it's simple. It's uh, I think people should use it. I think we need users and contributors. Um, we hang on Gitter. Uh, and I actually set up a repo of all these examples, a little bit, a little bit more fleshed out and actually runnable. Um, so check that out, and then of course shout outs to the real frameless people. Uh, you know their hard work enables us to do um, things, with, cool things with Spark. Um, and uh, of course I got to get in the plug. Um, if you're interested in what what I've talked about, what we uh, and possibly you know doing Scala and Spark, um, we're you know interested in talking to you uh, at Co2. It's a hedge fund, we work with alternative data sets, um, doing machine learning, quant, um, NLP, um, and data engineering at scale. Um, so hit me up after this, or find me on Twitter, or, or give me an email. Any questions? <laughs> questions? Yes. I'm gonna have to think about that a little bit more. So, so are you are you asking if encoders use reflection or if they if the evidence is provided with reflection? I guess I'm saying so. If my encoder for trees, does it actually define how to encode a tree, or is it just evidence that Spark will allow us to try and do that? Um, it's evidence that's. Hmm. Oh, that's a good question. So, so I've definitely tried to uh, define encoders for like custom types, right? I've, I've tried very hard to do that in, in some ways. And if you don't 
if, if it still is not serializable in, in a way that Spark likes, it'll blow up at runtime. So, so like, it, I mentioned that it's hard to uh, define um, a functor for a data set because the map operation on data set requires an implicit encoder. So you can provide compile time evidence that you can, that you can um, encode your type. There's no proof that that in, encoding actually works at runtime. So I, I don't know if that answers your question, but it, it kind of gets halfway there, and then and then you know it can still blow up. Any other questions? Cool. Let's yep. thank Lau. Thank you. Long.